How important is it to understand our history, know our roots? On this journey, we rediscover the story of a Bhutanese historical figure and the legacy he left behind. What do we really know about Bimalingpa? Who was the Bhutanese Tartan? I asked myself this question before I began this journey. Most of us only remember him as the treasure revealer who is prophesied to be the one finding sacred Buddhist scrolls and dharmas hidden by Guru Rinpoche. On this journey, we retrace the footsteps of this great Tartan in Bumtang Valley as we learn more about him through my friend, Pao. Meet Pao Choining. He's a photographer, filmmaker, storyteller, but to most young Bhutanese, he's a modern spiritual guide whose stories and posts about Buddha Dharma is getting the attention of a whole new online generation. He's also behind the Stupa Resurrection Project in Bariprang, the birthplace of Bemalingpa, and that's what we're here for. When I told him I was interested to do a travelogue on the project, he told me that it's important to know more about the Tirtan before we head to the place that started it all and thus began an unconventional pilgrimage. Bhutan's most famous Tartan. His activities, discoveries and teachings not only shaped Bhutan's spiritual and political landscape but had a far-reaching impact through the trans-Himalayan areas. He was an artist, a skilled blacksmith, painter, sculptor. He was also a controversial mystic, but to some, a sorcerer of black magic. Guru Rinpoche had prophesied that the Buddha Dharma would need timely revivals in the future. For the purpose of these revivals, he hid teachings as treasures to be discovered by discoverers who were known as Tartans. And the time was right. He prophesied that there would be 1,000 minor Tartans, 100 major Tartans, and 5 king Tartans. Bemalingpa is the only Bhutanese amongst the five King Tartans. To know more about his life, we start from his place of death. Tamjing was built in uh, 1501. This is when Bemalingpa moved here and he spent uh, the last uh, 20 years of his life here. And basically the entire uh, Bemalingpa movement lineage uh, was centered around here. So this temple here now, uh, it is believed to be the oldest Nyingmapa temple in the world. Because of course there are many other Nyingmapa temples, but that have always somehow changed lineages. Tamjing here, it has been Pemalingpa lineage, it has been Nyingmapa since uh, 1501. Out of the five great Thurtan kings, what we have here is the last remaining uh, temple built by these five great beings. So I think uh, we Bhutanese are very, very fortunate to have this Nurbu or this wish-fulfilling jewel still in our lands. The Guru Rinpoche statue in the main Lakang in Tamjing is believed to be one of the oldest Guru Rinpoche statues in the world, built by Pemalingpa himself. It is believed that as Pemalingpa turned in for the night before completing the statue, Dakinis flew down and finished building the statue for him. But as the sun rose, the Dakinis flew away, leaving the statue without a hat. So, Pemalingpa is said to have made the hat, but turned out to be a little small for the statue's head. Pemalingpa is known to have been short and a small person, so it is believed that the hat was made based on the size of his own head. So if you look at the statue in Tamshing, you'll now know why Guru Rinpoche's hat is a bit small for his head. 
the Guru Rinpoche statue is also very, very sacred because of the substances it has inside. The heart essence of this Guru Rinpoche statue is a Vajrasattva statue, a Dorsem statue that Pema Lingpa took out of Mebarzo. Pema Lingpa's origin story is one of prophesied reincarnation, beginning from Bauta in Nepal. Once upon a time, there were three brothers who built a special stupa. Each brother made a noble aspiration upon completing the Chorten. The first brother aspired to take the Buddha Dharma to the land of snow, Tibet. The second brother then aspired to be born as the brother's patron. Hearing the aspirations made by his older brothers, the youngest brother aspired to be the dispeller of the obstacles his brothers might face. Few hundred years later, the oldest brother was born as Kempo Shantarishta, who took Buddhism to Tibet. The second brother was born as King Tutung Ditun, the great Dharma king of Tibet. The youngest was born out of a lotus in late Dhanakosha, Bodhiana in India, as Guru Rinpoche. But here's an interesting twist. When the second brother made his aspiration, he accidentally killed an insect, thereby interweaving his life and the insect for eternity. By that one act, when the brother was born as the king of Tibet, the insect was reborn as his little princess, Hajin Pemasel. But because of his accidental killing, his daughter did not have the merit to live a long, full life and dies at a young age of eight. Heartbroken, King Tsung Dutin takes his dying daughter to Guru Rinpoche and begs him to cure her. Guru Rinpoche only tells the story of Bauda and the brothers to the king. But in her dying moments, he recalls her mind stream and gives her a series of teachings and empowerments before her passing. It is at this moment that the little princess asks Guru Rinpoche about her future life, to which the great master answers. After living the lives of five unfortunate births, after exhausting all your negative karma, you will be born in the valley of Bumdang in 1450 as a short, harsh-mouthed man, but you will be my very own heart son, Ujjan Pema Lingpa, the fourth Tertan king. The thermas that he discovered, he had many. The most profound one has to be the Lama Nurbu Jamso, which is depicted on this wall. The fact that the Lama Nurbu Jamso is honored on this wall right next to the Guru Lhagang shows the importance of this practice to Pema Lingpa, but also to his people and of course to Bhutan. After the death of King Tritsung Ditsen, Guru Rinpoche is said to have ruled Tibet as a regent as the Crown Prince Murti Tenpo had not come of age. Many years later, when Guru Rinpoche announced that he would be leaving for Bhutan, the land of untamed Rakshas, the prince is said to have begged Guru Rinpoche not to leave. So at that time, the young prince accepts that, you know, Guru Rinpoche has to leave. But he requests Guru Rinpoche to give him a sacred teaching. He says, please give a teaching that you have never given to anyone. Guru Rinpoche gives his most profound secret teaching from his heart. It's known as the almost like an essence of his heart. And that is the Lama Nurbu Jamso. And it is a very sacred teaching because it is a teaching that has all three aspects of the Lama Yidam and the Khandro. And Murtik Tsempo actually attains enlightenment through that practice. He tells Guru Rinpoche that my sister, Lachan Pemasel, my older sister died when she was so young that she could not receive this teaching from you. And I almost see it as her inheritance. So he requests Guru Rinpoche to please may ensure that Pemasel in her future lives receives this teaching. At that time, Guru Rinpoche instructs Khandro Hishit Sojil right here to, uh, you know, ensure that Lachan Pemasel receives the teaching. And at that time, Khandro Hishit Sojil is said to have recorded the entire teaching with her own blood on a sacred paper in Khandro Daik, which is the sacred Takini script. And at that time, Khandro Ishit Sojil, Guru Rinpoche, and Urtik Tsempo, they go on to a, the cliff known as Singidra, the lion-like cliff in Lhodra in southern Tibet. And Guru Rinpoche seals it as a therma in the cliffside. He tells the treasure protectors, the guardians, to ensure that this treasure 
remains protected and to ensure that the final rebirth of Pema cell, who will be born as Ujjain Pema Lingpa, discovers the teaching when the right time comes. So centuries later, Pema Lingpa travels from Bumtang to Singidra and discovers the sacred teaching, which is his inheritance, you could say. For a second visit, we traveled a few minutes above Tamshing to a beautiful temple perched on a hill overlooking the beautiful summer glades of Bumtang. This temple is known as Padmasambhaval Hakang. The main temple is said to have been renovated by Pema Lingpa around the cave where Guru Rinpoche meditated. You can still see those imprints on the rock. Meet 69-year-old Lama Tseten. Lama Tseten is the oldest living master of the Pema Lingpa lineage. We all sat for tea with Lama Tseten as he told us a little more about the importance of Bari Brang and Pema Lingpa. Bari Brang The last temple we visited for the day was Kinchusum Lakang, also known as the second seat of Pemalingpa in Bumtang. On the advice of Guru Rinpoche, the Tibetan king built the original Kinchusum Lakang in Bhutan in the 8th century, as Guru Rinpoche felt the need of a monastery in Bhutan that could be of the same importance as Samye in Tibet. How is this connected to Pemalingpa? Well, during his time in Tamshing, the famous Tartan is said to have renovated the temple. The grand structure that you see today of the Lakang is an interesting renovation design constructed under the patronage of Sungchul Rinpoche, the 11th Pemalingpa reincarnation. This was done when a butt lamp fire accident burned parts of the original temple in 2009. Stay tuned for our next episode as we finally make our way to Bariprang, but first making a stop at the place where Pemalingpa became a Tartan.